Hi, everybody. Welcome to a episode 100, and I did not pull this up. It is 106 of Games My Mom Found. I am Mike Coverton, and who's a giant killer with me tonight? Junior pilot Michael K. Hughes. Uh, senior pilot Greg Seward? <laughs> <laughs> I always do that. Um, <laughs> yeah, we don't tell anybody on purpose that we do this in the game, so... <laughs> It's one of our things. And you caught Greg, me off guard because I, I have no notes for this. I'm like, uh, it's something. I mean, or you could have said I'm a I'm a mass murderer of a race of people, and I'm proud about it. Like type of that's what this is. <laughs> I'm Jack well, the Giant they, Killer. I'm like, to be fair, they started it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, and Greg, where might people know you from? Uh, you will uh, currently will know me from uh, the Player One podcast, which has been running for something like fourteen years now, and Generation Sixteen, which is my uh, my YouTube series about the history of the Sega Mega Drive slash Genesis. And twenty years ago, I was a member of Electronic Gaming Monthly. Oh wow! Nice. I I remember reading that magazine a long time ago. Love DGM. It was a long time ago. <laughs> I don't even. I, I used to subscribe to Game Inform, but now with GameStop, last time I went they're like, oh, do you want to re- subscribe? I'm like, are you guys even going to be in business in a month? They're like, and they just looked yeah. at me kind of screwed. I'm like, well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he didn't appreciate that when I said that to him. <laughs> I wasn't being mean. I mean, I love GameStop, and I was just like, what's the point of, sus- of subscribing if you're not even going to exist? Yeah. So, I love Game Inform. in a long time. I mean, that's, that, you know, great for them. They've hung around a long time. We were, when, uh, it, sorry, to go off in a tangent oh, here, okay. but when uh, when I was working at Ziff Davis for most of my tenure there, we were still in Chicago, and uh, Game Informer was the only other uh, magazine that was based in the Midwest. The rest of them were pretty much out on the West Coast. So uh, anytime a company uh, would come through, would swing through to show us a game or something like that, they would always, like, we were the round trip. It was us and Game Informer. Um, to the point that <clears throat> we used to, when when Nintendo brought games to review, you had to actually sit and play them with a Nintendo representative. You weren't allowed to keep the cartridge or take the cartridge home or anything like that. So they they come in like like lock boxes. Like when I when I reviewed Paper Mario for the N sixty four, it was in this big steel box with the N sixty four and the cartridge in it, and then a big lock on it. And the wow. rep had to be in the room while you played it. And if that person had to say go to the bathroom, legally they were supposed to pack everything up into a case and take that with them. Like they couldn't leave it in the room alone with you. So, uh, but the whole point of that being is that I actually know how far Game Informer got when they reviewed Paper Mario because they went there first, and all their save files were still on the cartridge. <laughs> Oh, uh, no, I'm, I'm a big fan of Game Informer. We actually have had gotten uh, two of them on the show. Two people who used to work there on the show. One that does nice. work there, one that did. So They're fun. always a great crew. It's a great magazine, and it's a great crew. Really nice people. Yeah, I just don't like GameStop. Or, I mean, I like GameStop, but I don't think GameStop's going to be around much longer. But right. They're still here. I sh- I, yeah, I, I have a little insight to that, but I can't say that on here. Um, but <laughs> it's a special company, I would, at times, I feel like. All right, but we are here to talk about Robotech Battlecry, made by Vicious Cycle Software, which I've never heard of. <laughs> they're not around anymore, I don't think, so. <laughs> okay. Is this the... Uh, no, they're not the same company that made the Robotech Invasion game, I see, then. They are, actually, oh. yes. Yep. I they, uh, not they're, the, they're the first company I worked for when I moved into game development. Oh, is this their third game? Okay, now I see. Because that's how I, I knew you were a Robotech fan, because I knew you worked on Invasion from listening to your show. I've heard that before. I've, I've never played Invasion yet. It's got to be better than this. <laughs> it's based on the other anime, which I've never watched of Robotech. For those that don't know, Robotech is three different animes that have nothing to do with each other combined together to make one show because of syndication. But we're only Robotech Battlecry is all based on the Macross saga, I think is what it's called in Japan or something like that. Super Dimension Fortress Mac- Macross. Because it wasn't even until years later that I found out that Robotech wasn't even Robotech in Japan. It was different animes. Like, I've actually never watched Master Saga or the new new generation Robotech, the final one, someday. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, when you really, when you start to, when you learn that, it's kind of like, and, and where you haven't watched that. Like, when I was, I, I watched this when I was a kid. Like, I used to come home from school. I'd I'd do my paper route as fast as I could and then come home from school and watch Macross or watch Robotech. And like if you watched them all the whole thing all the way through back then, it was pretty clear that it it didn't quite fit together. (laughs) But then you find out that, oh, it's actually three completely separate series that they just kind of rewrote and and edited a little bit to to fit together. And it's like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. It's like the the Digimon movie where it's actually three Japanese movies spliced together to to make... (laughs) One co- incoherent mess for America. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. 
Oh yeah, it, it's. I mean, I own the original DVDs and I own the Master Saga, which I've never seen. And then when I found out it was, I was done after that. I'm like, okay, I'm done now. I don't. I I I, I lost all interest in buying them or or watching them or anything. I see. I mean, Matt Cross is definitely the high water mark. Like they and and putting everything in together, like you said, for syndication, it was clearly to get Matt Cross on the air. That was the one they wanted, you know. But I mean, I was I was invested enough that I watched through the whole thing. Actually, here it only went into like three or four episodes of the third war, and then it would just restart every time. <laughs> um, and I was I was and I and as a kid, I would still watch it every weekday, thinking this is going to be the time. It probably <laughs> went through like five times. It's finally, like, you know what? Screw this. So I actually didn't see the entire series until the DVDs came out in the, like the late '90s. But I'm not surprised. But, uh, yeah. I still loved it. They got far enough to get the freaking all the syndication out, so they were done then. Yeah, it seemed like it. I don't know what the deal was. It's I mean, it was the 90s. Or, yeah. or late 80s, early 90s. Late 80s, yeah. I mean, I, I think this is credited like we were one of the first animes to come to America, too, so even before Dragon Ball. But it's I definitely thought... before Dragon Ball. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think like Astro Boy was... Astro Boy was definitely already around before Robotech was. I mean, I want to say... Uh, like maybe Voltron? Not sure. I know Voltron's early. I know Voltron. They were upset because they didn't have enough episodes for syndication. I was watching a thing all about that earlier before this. Right. Isn't that the reason why there's like there's the Lion Voltron and then like the Voltron that's made up of like twenty different cars and vehicles and things like that? Oh, I never got that far. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. There was that was another one where it was just like, wait, one doesn't seem to have anything to do with the other. What's going on here? Like, but. <laughs> That was the old days, right? It was about getting it on air. It wasn't about being true to what the original was. Yeah, they, and people, I, I like shorter series now. If the show is only twelve episodes, I'm all in. If it's a hundred episodes, I'm like, I'm good. I'll, I'll just yeah, get, I don't got time for that. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. Just like Robotech. Robotech went thirty six episodes, and then this game takes place. I think main. Well, part of the game, like part part of the games, you'll do missions from the show that you were just one of the pilots on the ship, even though you you weren't. Mm-hmm. It's, it's such a dark like this game is like I didn't think about like I actually had bought this game when it first came out back in which I had did not say it in the beginning at the top of the show in 2000 <laughs> 2002 I forgot uh-huh. that like, I didn't forget uh, <laughs> I bought this day it came out fifty dollars rode my bike to GameStop or took the bus picked it up I remember being so exciting and then I was not excited when I first played this <laughs> oh really Man. not that it's not a bad game it's just it's it's very hard. I thought, oh. and I still think that. I think the that, difficulty creeps fast. Yeah, that's what I was struck by replaying it. I mean, when when this came out, um, I mean, I'd already been playing like a preview copy because it was we did like a at EGM we had the exclusive on this uh, this game in the preview, and I, that I actually wrote it as like a four page preview. So we'd played a preview. I'd actually flown out to North Carolina, which is where Vicious Cycle was based. And got to sit and play and talk to the developers and everything like that. So by the time it came out, I kind of knew what to expect. But playing it again now, like 18, God, 18 years later, <laughs> um, I, I was struck by the massive uh, difficulty spikes in the game. Like uh, the first part is it's pretty fairly simple and straightforward. But there's one like ambush canyons, I think, is where I was, which was like in the <laughs> second episode of five it's like the third mission and it's like you start off and you're defending a base and then okay now we have to go get some then you have to go get like three uh, supply crates which i did and then it's like we have a downed helicopter pilot you need to go save and like you've got this vague direction on the map but if you fly the wrong way the mission just ends and it doesn't tell you why (laughs) it's over you have like hell? a minute or two like you have i i because i use safe stage for this part just to kind of test it too if you do not go immediately where you're supposed to go mission ends every time yeah it's it's infuriating <laughs> absolutely infuriating so and it's very early in the game so yeah yeah uh, i got frustrated even before that is the first boss fight at the end of the first act and it yeah. was just uh it's such a bullet sponge yeah <laughs> everything and is it's actually it's funny because as I was playing that, I was reminded because, like I say, so this this game was kind of the beginning of my game development career because I went out and I met Vicious Cycle and I was a huge Robotech fan and they were really happy with the coverage they got and I kind of kept in touch with the development group. So when it was time for me to move on and, and uh, decide that I wanted to get into game development, I actually let Eric Peterson, who was the president of Vicious Cycle, know that I was looking. Not ask for a job, just to, you know, we were chatting and I mentioned, he says, well, why don't you come down here? We're working on the sequel to Robotech. 
oh, cool. Okay. So I ended up going down there for a year and, and working on Invasion and so much insight into that, like what you're saying, the bullet sponge thing, because that was the way we balanced the game. It's like, well, this mission's too easy. We'll just up everyone's HP <laughs> by like 200% and that'll fix the problem. It's like, well, it, it, it doesn't fix the problem, but it, you know, I mean, I guess it's not too easy anymore. <laughs> or just put in a put in never never ending spawning enemies. Yeah. Oh, That's there are. The There's happens. a lot of that too. Yeah. yeah. Like with uh, because I you well this game also comes with cheat codes too, which are in the game. You just hold down like L one R one, put a couple button combinations, and you get cheat codes. Yeah. So they do. They don't help. <laughs> yeah. They don't help. We'll get to that, but they don't help. <laughs> I got had me, got me past that mission that I kept losing because I was flying in the wrong direction. That was. That was <laughs> That's what save states were for for me. Yeah. <laughs> save states didn't, well, because I was save state and I was able to test things, like there's a one mission where you're sniping battle pods and I could kill everything in one shot. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to shoot this guy, shoot this guy really fast and see what happens. But if you shoot a guy in the wrong order, you automatically fail the mission because you're not supposed <laughs> to be doing what I was doing. Yeah, there seems to be a lot of that in this, which it's it's too bad. But, you know, yeah, I was I was so excited over the fact that I was playing a Robotech game in Same. 2002. You know, and it was just this this series that I was absolutely in love with when I was a kid. So I I was I managed to look past all that. But it, yeah, it playing it again now. I don't know. <laughs> but it didn't bother me in two thousand two, but it did bother me in this twenty twenty a lot. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Like I was I still I mean, I'm still glad we played. Like I was excited to play this game because I was excited to go back and finally finish this because when I bought it in two thousand two I never I by looking at the mission, I actually got to chapter five. So I got really far in this game. Somehow younger Mike was able to, to keep doing it. Even I wasn't. And I was, I was impressed, a little surprised by it. I'm like, I recognize these missions. I remember all this. And, but it, it, it would take so many tries. I feel like in a normal way, just because of, well, everything in this game is an escort mission. Almost. They really love their <laughs> escort missions. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I, and I forgot that. Except there's that one escort mission when you escort uh, Min May or you have to protect Min May. And I'm like, can't I just shoot her and end this? Like, oh man, I'm, that would have been nice. I hate Min May. I mean, I, I as a kid, I really like Min May, but as I got older and I have been through bad bad relationships, and I really like, man, this girl is really toxic. <laughs> <laughs> like, she's terrible. The uh, it's funny because I I you unlock the which is one of the things that I loved back then is that you unlock the uh, interviews with the character actors. That they because they used a bunch of the actors that were in the original show, and they actually have I forget her name, the lady that voiced Min May, and she's like supremely aware that people hate that character. <laughs> so, yeah. I never hated her until until recently when it hit me. Like, <laughs> wow, yeah, she because she leads on Rick throughout the show constantly, and yeah. she's the reason he enlists in the military. He, you know, he has Lisa that's interested in him. And he's like, oh, well, I want to go after Min May, who's with her abusive cousin that's beaten her. But hey, like, oh man. I, I'd forgotten a lot about this until I watched a little like recap thing about the show, and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> ah, the show's brilliant. Brilliant. Love it. So yeah, did the Liquid Snake voice the main character in the show, too? No, he voiced a character named Max Sterling, which was one of the main characters, but wasn't the main character. That makes uh, more sense, because, like, Cam Clark is a great voice actor, don't get me wrong, but he should not be voicing the main character. His voice is so distinct, it's just, it just kind of felt off-putting for some reason. <laughs> You like I actually wrote a note down about that because I absolutely 100 percent agree. And I think especially coming at it from the standpoint of a hardcore uh, Robotech fan like Max Sterling is a pretty key character in Robotech. And it's like Cam Clark was a huge get at this time because, of course, Metal Gear Solid was like this huge hit. And so everyone knew him as Liquid Snake and kids from the 90s knew him as, as Leonardo, Leonardo. Right. Yeah. Like he was he's a big get for sure. But it's like you're playing a Macross game that's taking – or a Robotech game that's taking place in the Robotech universe. So somewhere in these user universe, Max Sterling exists, and your character sounds exactly like him because Cam Clark <laughs> can't help but sound like Cam Clark. And it's just like – but well, then why not just make Max Sterling the main character then if that's what you're going to do? Like I get the fan service, but at the same time, I think it, it hurts it a lot. But then you couldn't you have that like amazing ending that you get in the end of this game that we'll talk about later. Did you see the ending? I have not. I better pull that up and check it out before we get to it. Oh, it's not. I'm being completely sarcastic, by the way. I gathered. <laughs> the way you've been talking about it the last week or so, it's like I figured it was bad. You know, as we've been talking about Robotech, it made me think about something that I that's not really in the game, but it, it fits the same mentality of the game of how fucked up that song is. She keeps singing when they're massacring a whole horde of aliens. That Min May just won't stop singing. And it's really <laughs> uh. <laughs> I was listening to it right while we were 
having technical issues, and I was like, man, this song is... This, this, when I thought about the show, and there's an episode in the show, which is what happens right be Part of the game has a level in there where you're fighting, massacring these Entrati aliens that are attacking Earth, and she's singing, stay tried, do, do, and it's just like, man, this is terrible. <laughs> this is really bad. This is really dark. But it seems so cool back when we were kids. It is. I mean, it's that... The- yeah, I mean that's the point, though, right? Like they've—that's after they've destroyed the Earth. They've killed everybody on yeah. Earth. So, but yeah, the whole point was was that the that her music would. Uh, I think there's always been like the the sad as we get old as I got older and you realize like wow the songs in that show really aren't very good and they're not sung very well. But Apparently, like they're supposed to be this like earth shattering thing, right? In the Japanese version, she has different songs that fit the mood for each for each event when she's singing. But in the, in the American version, we just got the same song over and over again. I want to be a star. <laughs> Yeah, well, there was a different song for that for that big battle in the oh. in the show, which I will say, like, so we were talking about this before we went on air, but like the uh, the, the the game jumps through the first half of the of that of Macross, like everything that happens in space, they touch on like very specific episodes, like you're in the very first episode, and then like nine months pass, and you're where they got back to Earth from Pluto and blow up Ontario, which as a Canadian, I always thought that was the coolest thing in the world. And like, and then a few more months pass, and then it's the final big battle out in space, which is a great episode of the show. Like, it's, uh, from an animation standpoint, it, it's incredible. And while I appreciate that they're using sort of remixed music or updated music from the show in the game, which we weren't allowed to do in Invasion... I really think that that would have had more impact if it was using the Min May song, as terrible as it was, just because it would feel more like the show. Yeah, that some. I mean, I remember hearing like the some of the music they did take from the show they put in the game, and I got all excited when I heard that original like, oh, title theme again, mm-hmm. which I'd forgotten I even knew it existed. But as soon as my ears heard, I'm like, oh, I'm back. It was very dramatic. Very dramatic. Actually, Apparently, this game had a collector's edition that came with the the soundtrack on CD, so you could you could relive those glory days any I, day, anytime you want, Mike. I have that. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I bought the game was the collector's edition. I was all in, a hundred percent in. I never buy collector's editions, even then. <laughs> I I might. I mean, I could have seen myself doing it, but I was still in high school at this time. So yeah, two thousand two seems awfully early for a collector's edition. I don't feel like that started until like the three sixty era as a regular thing. <laughs> they were definitely not as common. I mean, that's one thing I, I'll say that I think Vicious Cycle and TDK did really well with this is that you know you've got the collector's edition. You've got again like a whole slew of uh, interviews with the actors, which you didn't see a lot of back then either. So you know, there, there's some there's some fan service there that I like a lot. But yeah, I mean, the, from the gameplay standpoint, I, I remember, and this is one of the things that we covered when we were covering the game at EGM, I, I had asked them, like, how come there aren't more missions during the whole time that the SDF-1's in space, which is like the first half of the series. And they're just like, well, there's nothing to do in space. You're just flying around as a plane for the most part and not really doing anything else. You're not really taking advantage of the transformation, which I understood at the time, and I guess I still do, but boy, I really wish they they had sort of really stuck to the first half of the series because as I was playing it, maybe, I don't know if you guys remember or agree with this or not, but the airplane combat is the best part of the game. That's the part they got right, I thought. Like, the walking around as the Bioroid, as the giant mech, as cool as that is, I, it wasn't fun to play. No, the, the I, air... The, you go, Mike. Uh, I was just going to say, I like that when you're in the plane mode, you it kind of gives you a target of where you, to aim the machine guns mm. to properly lead because I cannot do that on my own to <laughs> save my life. <laughs> no. But beyond that, I have complete spatial unawareness when it comes to s- the flying games, so enemies can be <laughs> right in front of me and somehow I'll miss them. <laughs> so, like, I'll turn around because the radar says there's an enemy behind you, and by the time I turn around, they're on the other side, so I'm just spinning around chasing this enemy, and it goes on too long, and I look like an idiot. Right. Yeah, that's... <laughs> I didn't have a... I didn't, I, I'm didn't. i not a big into flying game type guy, but I did not I did enjoy the playing parts, but that's because I could just unload missile missile barrage after missile barrage on people, because I had the cheat code in that my missiles refilled really yeah. fast. <laughs> even then, I remember like when I played this game back in the day, or even before I started, because I didn't cheat right away. It was the... One of the missions broke me <laughs> that I just said, okay, we're done. We're cheating from now on. I think it was the one Greg mentioned for me where you're protecting that building at the beginning. No, I don't even... Th- um, there's a previous one where you're com- uh, protecting the community center. And like, oh. I s- <laughs> like I said early on the episode, like 
you can have all the cheats on you want. That building is still going to explode at least a couple of times before you get the hang of it. It's so funny because as I was playing that mission, I was actually playing that mission again this morning. It's like, I mean, I'm glad that I saved the civilians that were in the arena, but I leveled the city. Like, it wasn't the Zentradi, it was me. I leveled that city. Like, and I didn't mean to. It's just, you know, that was one of the big selling points is that you could destroy some buildings. Like, that's cool and it makes it look dynamic. But as I'm playing it, it's like, I'm pretty pretty sure i did way more property <laughs> damage than any of the alien forces did so oh yeah you just destroy cities and <laughs> i i didn't mind i mean he does have some like little witty line he says or something each when you yeah. do it enough times yeah like that building came out of nowhere or something yeah, like that there, <laughs> god there's so many stupid little lines that i was uh, laughing at I'm like this is dumb but it's still it amuses me still yeah. all this time <laughs> Oh, like we're I'm taking you to school or something oh, like that. Geez. Jack the Giant Killer. That one is the one that I kind of like. You know, that's a little <laughs> getting a little dark here. But as a kid, I thought, oh yeah, that is cool. And I'm like, mm, it's a little little bad now. But yeah, Imagine I mean, like someone and then like an actual army like that that just keeps repeating oh. the same thing until someone acknowledges it. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that would be worst. terrible. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, you know, going back and playing it now, and, and I always find that we're playing even, like I say, it's, it makes me sad that this game's 20 years old, because that means that I'm old too, but the, because um, I was like in my 20s when I played it, but the, uh, it's it's hard to play stuff like this now, I find, especially the 3D stuff, and this isn't really even that early of a 3D game, but we have such sort of standards that we're used to for 3D action games now. Like I still, even playing hours of this now, I still am reaching for the right stick to turn the camera. Like I really, really, really want to turn the camera with the right stick. And like look playing it and I'm like, man, why didn't we even have like and maybe I missed it, but like why don't we even have like a quick turn or something? Anything. So I can, you know, so when there's somebody behind me, I'm not just taking baby steps in a to turn 180 degrees. But so that's why I feel like when you you know, and then I got into a mission where there was a, a an attacking Zentradi cap ship or something like that, and you're up in the air again and it's like here is where I feel like the game, you know, if you're looking for the bright spots, that's where the game shines because you're you're flying around. They usually have pretty nice backdrops. There's a big cap ship. There's lasers everywhere. There's missile contrails everywhere. There's a bunch of battle pods flying at you and smoke and explosions. And it's like, this looks awesome. But when I'm on the ground, everything's really slow. Everything's really spread out. And I, I, I'm, I'm wrestling with the controls more than I'm doing anything else. So, you know, it's like I, I didn't hate those sections as much. 20 years ago but we didn't have the same standards back then that we do now it's also 2002 is a is a special year of that era yeah we've been playing a lot of 2002 games and it's been um oh <laughs> yeah experiences. I, I remember you guys talking about that i was listening to some of your previous episodes and i saw yeah. somebody it's like, like complete <laughs> happenstance we picked like five games from that year and they just <laughs> every one of them turned out to be just bad <laughs> two. yeah mm. except first party that. nintendo well, yeah. Stay far away from Blood Omen 2 if you can. That is... I remember Blood Omen 2. I think I reviewed that. And... <laughs> Something else. Wasn't that the one where you could suck, like, when you killed an enemy, you'd suck their blood, but it, it was like, yeah, a, like a fountain of blood that spewed from <laughs> them to your mouth? It's the best yep. part of that game. Yeah, that's pretty, it's pretty cool. <laughs> it is until you do it, like, 300, 400 times. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's a little less cool than later, but, oh, that was a game. I also gotta say, one thing that was interesting about Robotech Battlecry for me is that it still looks it still looks good because of the cells the cell shading they use the graphics didn't age bad like I thought it was still a really pretty looking game yeah and that, I thought that was I mean I you know I was impressed like normally games from this era aren't always don't still look good but this one looked really good still yeah it it sidesteps the I mean it's actually you just mentioned first party Nintendo and I mean this is something that I think Nintendo's been amazing at ever since the GameCube where even if they're on like the they have like lower end hardware compared to their competitors their games always look amazing because they play to the strengths of the hardware and I feel like what they did with Robotech is is definitely along the same lines and I actually have been setting up an old game room so I actually played this on a on a like a 27 inch CRT television oh, wow. and boy does that make the game look really nice <laughs> Because you know, you're not getting any of the issues, right? So, yeah, it, it does hold up, I have to say. And actually, if you guys do end up, ever end up going and doing um, checking out Invasion, that's something I wish we were allowed to do. I really, ho- I really wish that we were allowed to do um, cell shading with Invasion as well, but we weren't. So we had to go with a more realistic look, and I think the game suffered for it. I really want to play it. I was going to say, I have a feeling we're going to end up playing that at some point. <laughs> You'll have to invite me back if you do. More, more of just because uh, I want to, you know, 
That way you'll have to be nice about it because you don't want to <laughs> too much. You don't want me to cry on air. I mean, I, hey, I like a lot of I like a lot of games that other people don't like sometimes. <laughs> like, I mean, like I actually enjoyed this game once I put on all the cheats. I couldn't die, and it, nice. I didn't really like enemies dying in one hit. I put that on too, just because of, there's a mission you have to escort a radar thing, yes. and no matter what I did, I would hover right above it, and they were like, "Yeah, screw you!" And they just go out right after the radar thing, and I'm like, "Was said the cat scan mission?" You know yep. what? I love it because I so to get ready for this episode, I went back and grabbed the issues that I knew we covered this game in an EGM, ah. and I went and found the original review of the game. And I, I'm just I'm leafing through it here because I, I want to point something out that I, I love that you brought up the cat scan mission. <laughs> we gave the game where the heck is it pages? We gave the game an eight point five. That was me, an eight and a seven point five, which is a little high. But one full third of the page is talking about that mission (laughs) and it's literally us telling people like here's how you get through this so that you can see the rest of the game oh i could have used that yeah because it's like apparently and i'm just going to read this i don't remember this but apparently the way to do it and i probably wrote this is that you ignore the battle pods since they're not firing on the cat's eye and if you destroy any they'll just reappear in greater numbers oh instead you fly tight circles around the plane and drop flares every five seconds did you know you could drop flares how do you drop flares I don't know. I was asking you. <laughs> Man, I don't remember either. I read that too, and I'm like, how do you drop flares? I don't know. I feel like I remember that from the tutorial, but I have no idea. There's a tutorial? There was yeah, a there tutorial. is a tutorial. <laughs> and apparently some of those fighter pots are firing missiles, and those are the ones you have to take out. But yeah, yeah I, I just thought it was funny that the actual review, like they, this is for a game no one's played yet. We're just like, yeah, this mission sucks. Like, here's how you read it. <laughs> it's That's a lot. the mission that broke me. Like, I, I tried to probably half a dozen times and i just i was full on raging i actually rage quit this game that was as far as i made it i'm like this is stupid i have cheats on i can't uh, die my ammo regenerates super fast and i'm still failing the mission it's just <laughs> nope i'm done i turned on one hit ko's for that one where every shot of my gun would kill everything instantly and i, <laughs> I still failed that mission yep. the first time so yeah it's a it's a bad mission <laughs> it's it's rough there's major difficulty spikes in that game well, you can also shoot down missiles with your battle oid, which I never did. Just because I didn't have to this time. I remember doing it back in the day when I played oh, the yeah. game. Oh, yeah. Right. It, I forgot about that. One of the buttons, he'll he'll shoot up, and they'll just shoot missiles instead of shooting towards a target to help you deflect things. Like we, We'd mentioned a little bit about this, but we hadn't really went into what a Veritech is. A Veritech has three different forms. A jet fighter, uh, what's called a guardian mode, is essentially a jet with legs that can hover like a helicopter if it wants to, or and it can also shoot missiles, where in the battle oid, you're just a giant mech, but you can only sh- use your gun. You don't have any missiles. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're a Gundam. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, cool. and I, I've always... I Playing it now, I like I say, I'm really disappointed with the battleoid mode it, he it, the, the the robot moves so slow it's yeah. just not fun to play uh which is too bad because it's like the coolest part of the 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 idea of that mecha right but mm-hmm. i mean i they, they really i do like the fact that you can use any form whenever you want i mean that was something that i know was a big uh thing that they were uh really paying attention to when they were making the game and i've played other macross games being being a big fan i've got a few of the different ones and there have been a lot of games in the past with that series that you're forced into different modes you don't get to choose what mode you're you're flying in so it is nice that you get to do that in this at least for better or worse i I don't know that it adds a whole lot but it's kind of cool like i like the missions on the ground um i think i was doing the mission in flood city which is one of those terrible endless enemy respawn areas but like you finish, I finished up a mission and I'm kind of standing there in battle mode and it's kind of cool to just transform into a fighter and jet off from a standing start. You know, it's like it, it feels Robotech until you fly into a building and change back to a battle <laughs> Well, they because there's an invisible ceiling. Yeah, they do come out of nowhere. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, those that was fun. I really did enjoy the transformations, and I I mostly just stayed. I mostly was guardian. I almost never yeah. use battle in this game because it's kind of useless when you're not when you don't have to deflect missiles. Because mm-hmm. I didn't. I couldn't. They couldn't hurt me. They could just. Keep, I mean, I the thing is, even with infinite health, I still died multiple times in this game <laughs> and failed missions because of the way that the game is set up. That's like, yep. well, I'm like, wow. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you're right. Guardian's way more useful because you can still fire missiles when you're in battle age. Can't do that. And you're faster. And you're faster. Guardian. Yeah. You can and you can pick stuff up too. Which you can mm-hmm. go rescue pilots and bring them to places for no reason. Yep. Because you know the SDF really, the Robotech really cares about saving people. I mean, they didn't just blow up cities and you know blow up Ontario or anything. No, no, they cared about saving every life they could. Well, it, to be fair, they didn't do that on purpose. <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> 
I just I was watching some review that was talking about how Captain Global was a, like a psychotic killer, and I'm like, <laughs> you know, I can kind of buy into this right now. Uh, it's hilarious. I forgot about the first episode or one of the early episodes where they when they first transform and they all of a sudden they just people are getting stuck out the airlock and stuff and it's just like hmm. <laughs> oh, that mean, show's great. Great. I really want to rewatch it. I try to get my wife to watch. She's like, no. <laughs> and she likes I, anime. She just wouldn't watch this one. My daughter is into it now, so my fourteen year old, so I'm thinking that'll give me an excuse to watch it again. But we've tried once or twice and had some false starts, so I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how well it ate how well it aged. I don't know how well this game aged, though, but... Uh, I mean, I, I did enjoy myself while playing this. Like, when I was just a mech killing things in one shot, I had fun. Like, it was at, like anytime I used my gun, it was a one-shot kill where my missiles weren't. So I would use missiles sometimes just to make things last longer until it became a problem. Right. <laughs> too close to my target that you were going to blow up. Like, even with even one-hit KO, there were multiple times I'm escorting helicopters. They almost blew up on me, and I'm like, I'm killing everything that pops on the screen the moment it kills on. How are you getting almost killed here? But... Yeah, I, I'm guessing, and, and this is again based on, and I don't have any insight into whether this is true or not, but I know in Invasion, uh, when we had a couple of escort missions, in order to ratchet up the drama, no matter how well you were doing, the life bar would go down on the thing you were escorting um, based on triggers. Uh, so th- it could be that they did the same thing in this game. Okay. So, yeah, because, you know, drama. You want to have it to be intense, so... I mean, I do not remember. I didn't. I think. I think I realized how many escort missions this game had until we played. I played it for the for this episode, and I'm just like, my God, I'm escorting every level almost. Even a level where someone's like, they're here to help you. No, they're here for you to protect them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. As if they die, you fail. Yeah, yeah everything. Two thirds of the ones. Two thirds of the ones that I actually played were probably escorts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It doesn't get less. No. And it's such a shame too, because like in some like that cat's eye stage, if I remember correctly, because I didn't play it this time around, but um, <laughs> you're 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 going through like a debris field in space of a bunch of old Zentradi ships, right? Like that's cool. I, as a fan, I'm I'm kind of like enjoying the scenery and kind of want to take some of it in, but you can't because there's just an endless barrage of missiles, and we're you know respawning enemies two for everyone you kill, and it's just like oh my god. It's yeah, that, that was some of the problem. Like, it was really with the cheat codes on that I realized how much things are endless responding. Like, there's a level where you have to stop these green cruisers that drop off more troops, and I could kill them instantly with one shot of my gun. As soon as you blow up one, the next one rises up right above, yeah. right next to it. Like, right where they just they don't ever stop. No, no, exactly. And that's when I'm like, I, so I would let them get close to the landing, then blow them up so I, have, I wouldn't have as many to deal with. It's good strategy. See, the game's teaching you. Uh, with my cheat codes on, because <laughs> I never would have gotten there otherwise. <laughs> it was very interesting to see it with cheat codes. It really kind of like because it gave me more insight into how the game operated because I was killing things so quickly that I could kind of like understand the game a little bit better, like how they how they programmed it. I thought that was the, interesting. <laughs> the game's teaching you how to abuse its own systems. So I mean, it has cheat codes actually... <laughs> in the game. And when you yeah. when you access the code, where when you type, I love when you type in a code. It's like it'll say a line from the game or the I show. Love that. Like one is that's a giant tuna or something like whatever the hell the line is. <laughs> it's a big tuna fish. Oh man, I I was still amused. That that is a really good episode, man, with that tuna fish when they're when Rick and her are locked in there and they think they're gonna die. Oh, yeah. so good. I've never ever I've never uh, speaking as a longtime fan. I've never figured out because that the tuna's head sure looks like sure looks robotic when they've <laughs> when they've picked it clean of all the meat. And it's but that I thought they just ate the meat. What the hell is going on? Why does it look like a robot skull over there now? Bad at it. Maybe it was something else and they changed it. Mm, I don't know. I, <laughs> I mean, this was an anime that was ripped apart and put back together. I mean, that was how I learned the tuna fish are huge. I didn't know that. I, I thought they came in little way. cans. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, there's this show. I might actually, I might actually rewatch this show. Soon. <laughs> It's a good. Sh- it, it like seriously, you gotta. If you get past the sort of, you know, this is this is a soap opera for ten year olds. Like if you kind of accept that, Macross is really good. The Macross section is really good. Minime is I'll, annoying, but the Macross section is really good. I can, I'll just stop at episode thirty once they blow up the. I don't. I don't need to watch the whole when after the world is after the Earth is all destroyed. Right. Trying to put things together. The only good thing about that is he finally gets with Lisa at the very end and tells Minime to be done with her. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's there's like some it. really great moments, but yeah, that uh, force of arms or whatever it is, the the one where yeah they blow up the world, yeah. that is one of my favorite episodes of television 
in history, even with that terrible song. It's like it sends <laughs> tingles down my spine because the animation quality really gets upped in that in that episode. I, too, so. I mean, it's too bad we didn't get more levels in this game that were from the show and more like iconic scenes that have just time. Jack doing random missions over the small course of the end of the show where things aren't really happening, where they're just fighting Centrati that are still alive from the crash. Yeah, and that's the thing. I mean, it comes from the, their thought, and I, I don't disagree. Like I said, I don't disagree with it, but it comes from their thought that there wasn't enough to do in space. But like, if you're, you know, if you remember the show at all, the the, the episodes where they're coming back to Earth from Pluto, I mean. They, there's this whole great section where they go to Mars base and they blow it up. And I like that the, level. Yeah, there's a big fight in the rings of Saturn. Like there's some really cool set piece levels. And also the whole time part where they get caught and they go to the Zentradi Central Command and there's like millions of battleships and they're in the ships trying to get out. Like there's a lot to do there um, that they could have done. But I, but it, they also would have had to put the car- the player in the, the in the shoes of one of the main characters, like Rick rick hunter or something and i don't know that they were allowed like i think that's the biggest thing uh, what, the other thing that i learned when working on invasion is that working with harmony gold is is a minefield and it's because i don't know how much you know about this show but the rights to macross are a, a tangled mess over who owns what and like i know harmony gold i think that's the reason they keep producing content is so they can hang on to the rights but like when we were working on invasion there was this whole thing where we were, because we were on the ruined earth as well. So we were thinking, well, we're going to have Mecha strewn about from the previous wars that are actually from like Macross and from Southern Cross, which is the second war. And we were told flat out, like, no, you can't do that. You're not allowed to do that. Even though we own all these rights, you're not allowed to do that. So it might have been, you know, an edict from above to say, you can't put the player in the shoes of Rick Hunter. That's not allowed. So okay. it's too bad, but could be. That makes sense. I have heard that it's all a mess with the rights that they don't nobody know who know who owns what exactly with this show. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, it it makes sense in that in that aspect. I mean, it just it would have been cool to play as Rick Hunter instead of just Jack oh, yeah. with the voice of Max. Yeah, big time. Jack the Giant Slayer. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I've heard that too many times. Next time, try <laughs> aiming. Oh yeah, that's actually, another good one. I played most of this game with the sound on just because I enjoyed the Robotech theme when they would come on. Yeah. Yeah. I had a podcast in the background. I think I was probably listening to your show, too, in the background while playing this, but I still had the sound on. Oh, man. Especially when you can't die, I don't need to hear where enemies are coming from. I mean, they can still stop things, but the radar is pretty useful, except for when they block the radar. That's yeah. Annoying. Yeah. Yeah, I'd forgotten <sighs> they do that. Yeah, there's one mission you have to actually uh, fly through debris and find little, like, these radar, the radar guys and destroy them while all their enemies just constantly keep respawning. And it took me a while to find one that was hidden somewhere. I, the, I have yeah i remember that mission the flood flooded city one um no it's way it's in space but the flooded city is where those recon pods first appear and jam yeah, okay. that's yes. the first time it happens there's also a level where you have to shoot a pipe in an under in a in like a a broken street and if you don't shoot the pipe the level won't continue the game does not tell you to shoot the pipe i had no idea what to do thought it i reload the mission watched the video and the guy's like oh you shoot the pipe i'm like what when I, I never shot a fight before. <laughs> it doesn't tell you. You just have to snipe it, and then it works. Yeah. I was like, Lovely. I was not. Because I mean, it says you have to save these pilots, and they're on fire. So I'm like, okay, I got to go find something. I go pick up something. Nope. You, I was just like, ah, come on, game. <laughs> I'm like, we've never done this before. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the, that goes back to that same thing in, in the Ambush Hills mission, right? Where it's like, I know you told me to go find that guy quick, but come on. Like, give me a timer <laughs> or something. Give me a hint as to what I'm doing wrong. Please. Oh, there's one level with a timer. You have to destroy these shuttles in a certain amount of time. And I don't know how the hell I would have done it without cheat codes because I, by the time I got there, I had like 10 sec, like a couple seconds left. Mm, yeah. I mean, for me, it was like, boom, boom, boom. They were all dead. But if I was playing legit, it would not have been that simple. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's yeah. crazy. It's got some tight times. Yeah. There's, there are some cool levels. Like there's one with a giant Centrati ship that's crashed into the earth. I think it's from an episode or there's an episode that talk about that town where you have to destroy the ship gets activated. And you have to destroy the turrets on the ship. Like that. Oh, cool. was fun. Yeah. That is a town from the show. I forget what it was. It was Monument City maybe or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. Where it's, it's all built around a crashed Centrati, Centrati cruiser, which was always cool imagery. Yeah. I do vaguely remember that episode. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing. Like, I, like the other thing that I found in this game and it's when you're in battle, when you're on the ground, you're fighting giants. Everything seems so small. 
in this you know what i mean like everything seems so small in this game and i don't know if it's just because the camera's way too zoomed out or what so the times when the when the uh, cruisers and the capital ships do show up, like I, I was always like super thankful because it's like, oh, this is like a nice big colorful set piece that I get to sort of fly around and look at. Because otherwise, it's, it's just I don't know what it is about that engine or how it's set up, but everything like these giant, these four story tall aliens that I'm fighting are just tiny on my screen. Yeah, they're they're and the buildings the buildings are so gigantic compared to them. Like it they it doesn't seem right. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good point. I never thought about that, but you're right. Like the 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 scale seems off. It probably was too. Like yeah. it just what they were, you know, just because it was maybe it was too hard to do or something, or they had to make concessions. Yeah, because even the destruct, I think they're called destructoids, the little mechs that you don't drive, but some of the other people use. Or if I remember right, they're they're tiny compared to in the show what the battleoids are. I, it's been a long time. Yeah, they're destroids, is what you're. Is okay, what you're for. Uh, yeah, I mean they're supposed to be approximately the same size as the Valkyries, I think, but I'm not. Sh- Sure. Some of them are huge. There's there's one particular that's just this massive like tank like thing that has two. It looks like it has two arms that are just gigantic missile launchers. It's in the la- one of the last levels of this game. Oh, is it okay? It's, yeah. You have to protect. You have to protect two of them. Okay. Because you know why not? Why wouldn't you be protecting them? <laughs> right. <sighs> they almost died on me too, and I was killing everything instantly. And I'm like, come on now, game. God. That's the. Th- I mean, that's why. Like when when the cheat when I found the cheats when because I wasn't originally I'm like I was gonna play this game with just save stage, which is still cheating to some people. But I'm like, this is how I'm gonna play this game. And then after a bit, I'm like, nope, I'm going Mike's road. I'm putting all the cheat codes in. <laughs> oh, For this, it was this just- show, I always try to start off playing games legit. Like I don't even use save states or anything until I start to struggle. And this one, it was like zero to sixty in about four <laughs> stages. Is like okay, I'll just I get put everything on. We're doing this as painless as possible yeah it's and too we bad on but, easy. yeah i was gonna ask so you're playing on easy because i was as well and it was like yeah it was just certain missions though because then if you did oh. manage to get over the hump the next mission was actually usually okay yeah. Just, yeah i was not playing on easy because the game does not have you pick a difficulty when you start a new game <laughs> no. you have to go into the options to yeah. change it it's like Super Nintendo rules, I guess. This is PS2 era. Like, don't don't expect things that we got we got we got spoiled on with 360 era and on. <laughs> we are we're so that's spoiled. true. That's true. That's why I love 360 on because when they started the achievements, they started doing games differently. I feel where there's a, a game can be beaten usually easier, so people see more. Where back then they would still make games more challenging, probably partly because of renting too, where they didn't want people to rent it and beat it. Oh yeah, well that's that's the thing that uh, on my web series I come across all the time when you hit like a Genesis game that's ridiculously hard. Nine times out of ten, it'll be oh yeah, Sega of America told us we had to make it hard because of weekend rentals. Yep. <laughs> so I, I hate that. Yeah. I feel like that plays such a big part in this game. I mean, I I do want to touch on the boss fights real quick. Cause there's a couple in this game, and to me, they're cool, even though like I remember them incorrectly. Like, because Mike had played this game before, was playing this game before I had started it, and he fought a big green mech, which is one of the female mechs. And I'm like, oh, you're fighting Miriam, and he's like, yeah, okay. And I get to the game, I'm like, this is not, what is not Miriam? Yeah, I think it's again, I think it's one of those same things where the the other characters can move in and out of the story, but I don't think that they can be directly part of the story. You know, really sad. yeah, like Lisa Hayes is in here a lot, uh, not a lot, but she's in here at the very beginning. But I mean, she's not doing anything, right? She's just talking to you on the radio, so it's not the same thing. But yeah, like, and Roy Foker is in there once in a while, although that only at the very beginning because he died halfway through the series anyway. But spoiler alert, yeah, but um, 20, you know, show. yeah, 30 year old show, yeah, I feel like we're past the statute on that one, but <laughs> the uh, yeah, like, you know, it, they don't do anything directly. In the game, so I'm, I'm guessing that's probably that might have been a rule. Again, I don't know. That's just a that's just a guess. I'm that not, makes I'm sense, sure. though. I, I can see, it, especially if you had that when you were working on Invasion, like that would definitely make sense. Yeah, I think that's one thing that bugged me is I I because I love these characters. I wanted to see more. Uh, I don't really care about Roy, but I wanted more Rick and definitely more Lisa. Yeah. And even in this game, they capture when you do have the one Lin Minmay mission, you capture the perfect like how how messed up Rick is when it comes to her, where he's like Minmay and he's all right back to normal Rick. I'm like, oh yep, I yeah. remember this. Mm-hmm. Oh man, it hit it, it, it hits hard. <laughs> I, <laughs> it was really after watching that video that I sent you, Mike, that you that you avoided to watch on purpose, <laughs> um, where he goes really on about how her her boyfriend, her cousin boyfriend that she Min Min May ends up with is abusive and an alcoholic and beats her and stuff. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and he's her cousin. Which let's talk about that, right? I mean, he's <laughs> yeah. her cousin. So, sure, it's a little dark at times. That I mean, my head as a kid. to be fair, like you know. 
95% of the Earth's, well, more than that, 99% of the Earth's population have been annihilated at that point. So maybe your <laughs> options aren't that high, but, you know. Come on, there's got to be somebody on the point. There's got to be somebody not you're not related to by blood. Would be. <laughs> I mean, there, there also is a multiplayer mode to this. I mean, none of us, I'm assuming, even tried it for this episode, no. but I know it's there. Yeah. yeah, no, I didn't even bother trying it. It's yeah. just a one-on-one dogfighting mode, right? I, or something yeah. like that. There's no bot. No. No. I remember that because I would have liked that because I remember playing Perfect Dark way too much because of bot. Because I love fighting bots, so you can yeah, also they're... scream in this game, which I never did, other than when the game made me. Because there's no point when you have cheat on, but you can snipe. Yeah, that seems to be the only reason to be to change the battle mode is to snipe. Yeah, that's the specialty of it. But yeah, I mean, there's a there were missions like I was looking at walkthrough through a guy's like, okay, you're gonna stand here and snipe here and take this out and do this. Like, there's ways to do certain things. So that you kind of, I feel like at times in this game, you have to do it exactly the way the game expected you to, or you won't make it. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely suffers from that, uh, which, you know, I, I can appreciate because if you have sort of a, a complex mission structure in your design, it's like, well, what if the player doesn't do this? <clears throat> well, I don't know. Let's just give the game, <laughs> game over and then we don't have to worry about it. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's how it feels. At, at the time. very least, give a little text tip. Be like, hey, yeah, switch to this mode to snipe these guys. It's like you give the that. player something. Oh, yeah. you do get that a lot in loading screens. Well, I mean, like, yeah, for the, the missions. Tool oh, tips yeah. during the mission would be nice. I mean, the missions, are, none of them are too long, but they feel long because there's no checkpoints within the, within the missions. So if, you, if you're if you having oh, one you're struggling with, there's there's just no checkpoint. You just got to keep doing, which, again, is the era, at the to, the era 2002. Yeah, that's yeah the, exactly. That's where I hit the first boss. It's like, you go through this big space fight, you're killing all these ships, and then it throws the boss at you, and I died. Part went to the boss. I'm like, okay, I'll just retry it. Nope, you start at the beginning of the mission. You can fight the waves of enemies all over again. And the health doesn't refill at all in this game, except in between missions. Like you, you don't get. There's no health pickup. There's no health upgrade. There's nothing like that. Yeah. Which is yeah. there is an armored Veritech you can get, which you can use only for space missions. But you can only be in the battleoid mode. Just means you can shoot missiles as a battleoid. I never oh, really? used it this time. So that's too bad because the armor Veritech, I thought I when I was a kid anyway, I thought it was just the coolest looking thing ever. Same. Uh, but yeah, I mean you, you could absolutely transform in that. Is it the cause there's two different types of armor Veritech, and I don't remember what this one looked like. Uh this is the it, one that Rick had in the episode where he screws up and almost gets himself killed. Oh, okay. So you couldn't <laughs> transform in that one. Okay, yeah, no. that's the one you okay. All right, cool. Yeah. I like how that's how all I had to say with that little part. You're like, yep. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's the only time that, that that version is in there. But then later on, actually in the battle when they blow up the Earth, they're in Super Veritex, which is a different kind of armor where they can transform. Man, I, I'm going to have to go dig out my DVD and watch. <laughs> <laughs> well, it'll be great to watch while I'm editing because that's what I do when I edit. I watch TV shows while I edit. There you go. See? Easier. So, man, I, you, yeah, you got me hankering to watch this again. <laughs> my work here is done. <laughs> oh, that's the only reason I put this game in the show because I've just I've been wanting to finish this game for over twenty years, you know, almost twenty years, and I'm like the only way I'm going to play through this is this show, and <laughs> I, mean, I finished it. I mean, I cheated as all hell, but I I saw the end. Is <laughs> <sighs> there anything else we need to say about Robotech that we haven't covered yet before we get to the ending of this game? There's a couple boss fights. I mean, for me, it was just I hit him once and he died, so it wasn't much of a fight, but <laughs> that's the right way to play this game. Hey. Yeah, I mean, it, it, they say the bosses that I did play, they're just bullet sponges. Yeah, that's all. Um, and, and that's, you know, it's too bad, but it is and what it is. There's a little bit of a story where you're fighting a character who wasn't in the who wasn't in the show that I thought was in the show. I thought it was Chiron, but it's not Chiron. It's someone who looks just like Chiron with a different name. <laughs> yeah, so. I mean, that's the whole thing, right? Like all, all these all these characters are basically analogs of characters that were in the show. I mean, you're essentially Rick Hunter, or, yeah. pretty much. Yeah. Except Rick Hunter wasn't this psychotic. I don't, I don't like Jack, and I, I, I mean, how Jack was a soldier in the military fighting against Roy in the global war that happened before Robotech, which is what unites the, unites the world for Robotech to happen because the SDF one crashes on the planet on mm-hmm. Earth. I mean, so they even, I mean, you have little like cutscenes too, which kind of like just like you know still images that didn't change and have text and voiceovers, and that's kind of cool. The story is. It's fine. It's a very basic go do this, go do that, keep fighting Centrati, and it kind of and it's cool if you like the show. It does fit into the show, sort of. Yeah, it runs parallel, which I mean, you know, it's not the it's not the first time you've seen stuff like that in in video games. Like I know that I remember for me the big one is like the Blade Runner 
uh, adventure game where you cross paths with the characters from the movie, but you don't usually interact with many of them. And it's kind of like that too. So I, you know, it runs parallel. That's cool. But yeah, I, I, I agree with you, Jack. Uh, I had trouble liking too much, even from his opening cinematic, where it's just like he was a soldier in the, this gigantic world war that was happening before the SDF-1 crash landed. And it's like, that's cool. But then when the war was over, it's like, I really still wanted to fly. So I became a mercenary. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> you know, I, I guess that's cool. Mm. <laughs> All right. And since neither of you got to the ending, I'm going to tell you about it real fast. So you, in the end, you finally fight the fake Chiron. You go up to space, you beat him. And then the ending shows Jack in the, in the Veritech fighter, the Veritech fighter runs out of fuel or whatever. It cra- you know, he essentially becomes derelict in space. Mm-hmm. He draws the Robotech symbol on the glass, and then the game ends. So technically, he died. Does he, though? <laughs> I'm assuming. We don't know. So I'm going to say a couple things about this. First of all, I hated that ending. <laughs> but that is analogous to the whole fold thing in sending the SDF-1 to the other side of Pluto, I believe it was, in the beginning of the actual show. That's the exact same thing that happens. That's why he's out in the middle of space, because the, the dude that oh. you're fighting performs a fold, and they end up uh, where, I, I forget, they're, they're near some planet near the edge of the galaxy, or the solar system. But anyway, that's absolutely taken straight from the show. But the other thing that I wanted to call out yeah, so we don't know if Jack died, and I'm going to give you a little Easter egg for Invasion, and we put this in completely because there were there was apparently a whole fan contingent online that was sure that Jack didn't die. In one of the levels in Invasion, you're in a you're by a ruined freeway, and on one pillar at the very beginning of the game of the level, there's some graffiti that says something like "Jack lives" or "Jack," <laughs> and if you <laughs> This is so stupid. If you shoot at that graffiti and you hit it 99 times, a soccer ball (laughs) will appear. What the hell? That you can kick around the level. I forget why. It was because of whatever uh, physics engine we were using at the time. It was one of their demos. So we decided, well, we put Jack was here, Jack uh, Jack lives or something like that, because there was this contingent of fans that were so convinced that Jack didn't die at the end of Robotech Battle Cry. But yeah, if you fire at it long enough, a soccer ball will pop out of it. You can kick it around. I'm gonna have to try this someday when we play. In, I want, we are gonna probably play Invasion just because I want to. It's been on my list for years. I should play it. <laughs> I mean, that's one thing about the show is that it gets me to finally go back and play games that I've been meaning to play for years and finish them. It's the exact same reason that I, I I stream on Twitch so I can just pick through my old library and have a reason to play them. Oh, and I'll I'll never play some of this stuff. <laughs> I never would have played this game, but I can talk about it. Uh, I mean, I like to believe Jack died just because I can't see them saving him. <laughs> So. I thought you were going to say because you didn't like him. I don't like him. <laughs> I like. I should say younger Mike liked him. Thirty-two year old Mike or yeah, thirty-three year old Mike at this point did not like him. Right. Yeah. He's just too psychotic for me. Yeah. I'm a giant, giant killer. <laughs> Gosh. I can't get over that. It's just it's, to me, it's just such psychotic to be like Jack the Giant Killer. Like you just massacred all these people. I mean, they they're trying to kill you, but still. <laughs> Uh, they took yeah. out the they took out the uh, the mission where he just flies into an encamp a peaceful encampment and he just starts slaughtering Centradi. <laughs> All the women and the children too. The w- <laughs> women and the children. <laughs> wow. Uh, I had to make you you know I'm referencing, I'm sure. Execute order two thousand two. Uh, I was thinking of more I was thinking of the sand uh, he how he hated sand maybe. I killed the men, all the women and children too. And I'm gonna <laughs> love you, it's okay, you're a mass murderer. Like a oh, fuck that movie. <laughs> Uh, I hate Attack of the Clones so much. Uh huh. I like Phantom Menace though. Phantom Menace is a fine film, but Attack of the Clones is complete utter garbage. I agree with half of that statement. <laughs> <laughs> People stop listening as soon as you start to defend Phantom Menace. I will always defend Phantom Menace. Yeah, but that's, make you right. I, I, I know I'm one of a kind with that movie, so it's okay. <laughs> All right. Any last things you guys want to say about Battle Cry before we go on to questions, comments, or memories? I have some. No, nope. not really. I have stuff to say, but I'm saving up for shelfer box. <laughs> I don't think it's nice things to say either. <laughs> oh, so almost. I post this in a few different groups. I didn't get a lot at first. I posted in the Overblood group. I got from Lila Navarre. That ending was sad. And from Angel Trevino. Brings back memories of elementary school and middle school and watching mech shows. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Did I... Okay, and I posted in the Giant Bomb group. And I got, I got a couple from Kendra Alexander. I love this game. Okay. I actually had a lot of people like say that from Jeff Choi. I fucking love this game when it was released. I don't know how well it holds up now, though. Uh, also, weren't there some pretty horrendous difficulty spikes? Hey. A little bit. 
That's well, exactly but... right. <laughs> <laughs> and this one's good from Gabriel Gonzalez. My love for the anime made me like it more than it deserved. Those escort missions were horrible. We need a new Macross game, preferably developed by Platinum. That is, that's pretty much described it perfectly. That's exactly how I felt about it, is that I liked it probably more than I think it deserved because uh, I was just such a massive fan of the show. It's just one of those games that yeah. if you're not a fan of the show, you're not going to be into it as much Yeah, as Mike found out. Yeah, can, can confirm. Oh, there's also no speedruns of this game on YouTube when you search Robotech speedrun for some reason. That's weird. Huh. Oh, really? That's too yeah. bad. <laughs> Nobody. There's one that says attempted, but I don't. I don't think it went. <laughs> like after the cat scan mission, put it down. Yeah, no <sighs> kidding. It's one of those games that I, I can understand why people. And then I found a Robotech discussion group, which I didn't know existed, but I shouldn't be surprised. And I had a lot of people comment, so I'll read. A, I'll read a few of those from John Muffet. Best Robotech game I've ever played. I remember sitting for hours playing this campaign, unlocking all the Veritech heads and skins, getting all the medals and destroying my younger brothers in multiplayer, which we have not talked about. It has medals that you can earn for mm-hmm. the unlock skins, I guess, or different heads that give you different stats or something. I, I guess. don't know if they give you different stats. I think they're I, literally just skins and heads. I think the heads do change. Like if you, if you look at them, they change like your speed and stuff. Oh, okay. I I didn't I I remember doing it before and this time I just left it the way it was because I couldn't die but <laughs> so it didn't matter to me but I I only do something yeah there are definitely models that change stats but I'm not sure okay. what that entails I totally missed that well I'm sure I knew it 20 years ago but totally missed it this time around <laughs> yeah this, this game <laughs> it's okay and from El Elwano Canales I know I butchered that was great and not hokey like some games get based based off licensed series. Yeah. A little hokey. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean that that yeah, I agree with that, but the the licenses too. I mean really, when you go back and watch Robotech, it's it is. You know? <laughs> yeah. It's a soap opera. Which I never I did not really. I remember going I remember getting off of school getting home from school watching this in Sailor Moon every day. Oh wow. I never uh, watched Sailor Moon. Sailor Moon's a really good show, but don't wa- you have to watch the not the original version because that's really just yeah, <laughs> um, they redid it called Crystal or something, which goes through the the manga, but it's a much better series. I need to watch myself one day. But I'm a big Sailor Moon fan too. But <laughs> there's not a lot of games for that. There is an RPG for Nintendo. I really want to play one day. Sure. Yeah, fair mm-hmm. amount of the games that came out in Japan for that. But yeah, you're right. A lot of them didn't come here. Yeah, they just I I just know the RPG. I played a little bit once. It's all translated. And just I someday I need to play it. You hear that, Mike? Someday. Uh huh. There you go. <laughs> I think you've got another episode. I think uh... I think you've got a whole series. There's a couple uh, beat em ups I wouldn't mind game. checking out. Yeah, there's a beat em up for arcade. That's pretty fun. I played that. All right, let's see. From Bartholomew Bros. Still have my PS2 and randomly play the game for shits and giggles. I use the cheat codes. That's the only way to play it now. <laughs> I mean, you know what? Bless them for putting those cheat codes in for exactly stuff like this. Not necessarily people doing podcasts, but for somebody who just wants to go back and experience <laughs> the game for a little while without dealing with the difficulty spikes, it's like, at least I can still mess around with this and have some fun. I mean, I'm pretty sure we're one of the few podcasts that ever covered this game. So, hey. right. I mean, and then we're pl- and then next week will be another episode of something that only <laughs> the podcast covered. But we'll talk about that. Sh- we'll mention that shortly. All right. And last one I'm going to read. Let's see. OK, uh, Ryan Jefferson. Great, great, great game. Love the ending. Played it over and over. Beat Invasion one time. There is a shout out to Jack, which we just mentioned. There it is. Love All the right. ending, huh? Hey, I'm glad. I'm glad that people enjoyed this game without cheat codes. I'm as impressed people beat the game without cheat codes. Uh, I mean, yeah, think about it too, right? Like, and and you're saying what? So 20 years ago, you're in your early 30s, so you would have yeah, been was... early teens, right? 12, 13 <laughs> hey, years old. I did it somehow. I got pretty far. So I mean, you know, a lot of times we talk about this on Player One all the time, where we put up with a lot when we're younger because you don't necessarily have access to tons of games when you're younger, and you don't necessarily have the you know uh, disposable income to go buy something else. And we didn't have all the games you can download and you couldn't play games on your phone. And, you know, so it's like, I mean, I know when I was really little, somebody gave me something that was mediocre at best at, say, Christmas. I was playing the hell out of that thing because I wasn't getting another game until my birthday. I tried that was that would make like a Sukuden 3. I got that for Christmas because I I, I was so excited and I I still have yet to beat that game. (laughs) I've never played that. I love Sukuden 1 and 2, but 3 is amazing. Yeah. 3 is a good game. It's just it's not an open RPG as much where you have to like really kind of love, you have to do things a certain way or, or you will not be getting through that game. Oh, okay. I, it's good though. It's just very difficult from what I remember as a kid. Uh, the first, I, I, I adored the first one. First one. You ever played the second one? You know what? I haven't, I've still got my copy and I've messed with it a little bit. I know it's much better. 
I've heard it's the, much better. Yeah, that's the one RPG I always hear people talk about. For, for PS1, yeah. I think. Yeah. So it's it's up there. I beat it once on emulation, and I have never went. I've always been meaning to go back back to it, and I just I own it on my PS3, but I just never had come back to it yet. One yeah. <laughs> All right, and I think we should go to shelf, stack, or box. And now that we're adding the new part to our our thing, we needed that we need something in the middle for games that we just weren't sure what to put. And Mike, why don't we start with the most positive weekend? You go first. Hey, I'm sure I'm sure where to put this. So, <laughs> <clears throat> a big surprise to go in the box because I couldn't even finish it with cheats. But starting out, like I was kind of impressed because. When you were trying to get me excited for the game, you should have led with the being able to transform on the fly because you know how I love that kind of stuff. That's why we're playing Cameo someday. But Cameo. <laughs> I love that game. It's <laughs> great. Oh God. But as soon as I got like the the land missions, I was really enjoying because like we were saying before, you can just kind of transform and maneuver and take out enemies. But as soon as I got into space, I was having trouble with spatial awareness and then I got the boss fight and they kicked my ass and then they started throwing escort after escort and <laughs> by the by the cat scan mission I was just done I'm like I could probably get past this but I know it's just going to happen again with a later mission so I'm just uh, it's the first game that I willingly didn't finish for the show because Blood Omen 2 gets a little asterisk next to it <laughs> so yeah you're in the hospital yeah I was a li- little almost dying so oh, geez. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you didn't like it that much. Wow. Yeah. yeah it's the, running, the running I'd joke. Rather, I'd rather be sick. I would, I would rather go back and play Bounty Hunter again than, than go back to Ooh. this one, though. <laughs> so Bounty Hunter is bad, but it's just bland and boring. This one is just difficult for all the wrong reasons. It's like the game wants you to play by your roles, but it doesn't tell you what the roles are. It's like Calvin Ball. It just kind of makes it up as it goes along. So, yeah, it's going in the box. <laughs> Hey, Star Wars Bounty Hunter is really challenging when you only hold down the square button. Don't really attack <laughs> like close Come on, I imagine so. Oh man, I played through half that game before I figured that out <laughs> without cheats. <laughs> All it's right. real easy when you go into the emulator and make square rapid fire. <laughs> uh, <laughs> great. Uh, make sure let me make sure I understand this this system here first, though. So stack is something that I want to go back and finish playing. Shelf is something that I might pick up again, and box is in storage. Is my do I have this right? Yeah. Shelf is something you want to display that you're proud of, that you'd want to tell people about. I put this on the shelf, and I do have this on the shelf uh, for a lot of different reasons. As a game, I mean, I agree with what you're saying. I think it's, I think it really holds up uh, from a visual standpoint. It looks beautiful even now. I love that it has the musical cues that I loved from the show when I was a kid. I, I'm still a, a massive fanboy for Robotech in general, so I got so excited about the fact that there was an actual Robotech game being made as, as opposed to just a Macross game, although there's some very good Macross games that was being translated to come here. It was actually being made as a Robotech game, which was was important to me. And then sort of from a personal standpoint, otherwise too, like you know, I really do look at this game as sort of what launched my game development career, uh, for what it was, and yeah, I mean, I, I it just it's it pulls too many nostalgia strings for me to to put it away forever. And I do like to pick it up once in a while and play it, but it does suffer massively from the way I look at it is whoever their testers were got way too good at those escort missions, <laughs> and, and and they balanced the game that way. That's that's to me it seems clearly what happened, and it needed a balancing pass by somebody who wasn't an expert at the game. And I think that would fix a ton of its problems. Okay. I'm actually going to put this on the shelf, too. As much as I will never play this game again in my life, I really like Robotech a lot, and it's, it has a lot of importance to me. Like, I was actually so excited to play this game and talk about it, and it's just, it ha- it has so much meaning to me. I mean, it's not something that I would re- re- probably recommend to people unless they're going to cheat. You know, I would, t- if I if I recommend to anyone, put all the cheat codes in and just enjoy the Robotech fan service you're getting, what right. what you are getting, and just play it for that. Like, don't try to actually play this game legit because you, you're you not going to get there. <laughs> or just, just go not play one of our Defense Force games if you just want to shoot a bunch of stuff because it's also true. way better. <laughs> way better. But then than... you don't get the awesome Robotech music. You don't get to transform in a Veritech. Like, you, again, this is a game that you have to be a Robotech fan, or you're not going to enjoy it. I yeah, think. so yeah, just to be clear, you're both putting this on the shelf because it's Robotech, right? Nope. Yeah, absolutely. Right, just checking. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I said in the Star Wars episode: like a licensed game should be fun by its own merits, not just because it has the license. But hey, you you like what you like, so. 
Oh, I mean, this uh, is actually on my shelf right to the left of me. I can I can pick it up right now if I want to. My special edition is on my <laughs> shelf. Suck it. I actually looked up the collector's edition to see how much it was because I was part part of me was very curious after you mentioned that it existed. I was like, hmm. And I've contemplated ordering a Veritech since we've been talking about this. So <laughs> I kind of want to buy one. Jack Archer. You gotta get that Jack Archer dog tag so you can be Jack the Giant. Yep, Slayer. that's right. It's gotta be it's gotta be Rick Hunter's skull leader or nothing. <laughs> I don't. That's I've the only Veritech to me. I have so many Veritech toys floating around this house right now. <sighs> or Max. I really like Max Sterling. You know, if Max would have been in this game, it would have had, I would have enjoyed it more if they could have, if they could have done that. You know, I think that would have been again, and, and I don't know if it was because Harmony Gold just wouldn't let them do it, but I think that would have been a brilliant way to do this because Max doesn't even come into the series until like uh, I don't know six to ten episodes in. Yeah, he's and he's mid- a rookie pilot, so let's let's get some of Max's story, but then you still put him in all those great set piece moments from the series, right? I think it would have been fantastic. I really want a Miriam too. I really like Miriam a lot. Mm, yeah, but that oh that show. Okay, <laughs> um, and I think that's about enough for that. Uh, Mike, why don't you introduce what we're talking about next week? We you're more are, <laughs> yeah, I'm very excited for this episode. We are playing Gotcha Force for the Nintendo GameCube. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. <laughs> yeah, I have a feeling we're for... getting a lot of that. People <laughs> over <laughs> don't know what it is. That's <laughs> it's a GameCube exclusive that that, that didn't go very far here. <laughs> I tried in Japan, but we'll talk about that next week. Yes. And before we wrap this episode, uh, Greg, why don't you mention where people can find you at? Sure. Yes, you can find me weekly on the Player One podcast. Like I said, we've been running a weekly uh, gaming show for about 14 years now. It's a bunch of uh, ex-magazine uh, editors and folks who've been in the industry and the development side as well. Myself, Chris Johnson, and Phil Theobald. Don't come and listen to us if you want to hear about the latest and greatest because you're not going to get that from us. Uh, we're a bunch of old men now who have kids of our own. So a lot of the things that we talk about are... Uh, Really, we just shoot the shit. Uh, we talk about parenthood. We talk about video games, but they're not always the latest video games. But you know, I think we've we've it's it's dad cast. It's a dad cast. <laughs> um, you can also find my series uh, on YouTube, Generation Sixteen, which is about the history. It's a cron gaming series about the history of the Sega Genesis slash Mega Drive. I've got an episode for every game up till the end of 1990 right now is where we're at and i've actually started a laser active series about the pioneer laser active uh which was a laser disc player slash video game console that supported the genesis and the turbo graphics so go check that out um and one other thing um if you head to twitch.tv slash seward i stream three nights a week over there monday tuesday and thursday usually retro games um, at starting at 9 p.m eastern on those nights right now we're playing through quake on the saturn land stalker on the genesis and Fantasy Star 2 on the Genesis. Oh, Star is one of those ones I've always wanted to check out. <laughs> Fantasy Star 2 is one of those ones that if you're not playing the four times experience hack, you're just setting <laughs> yourself, you might as well just slam your head into a door because it's about as much fun. On the PS4 collection, I think they have it where you have all the quality of life things you need. Mm-hmm. Which yep. is what I, I, I need to play Fantasy Star 2. As a guy who loves RPGs, I have to play that game someday. It's a good game. But it's a good game from 1989 standards, and yeah, yeah, I'm playing it with a with a ROM hack for four times gold and four times experience, and it's made it very playable. Oh yeah, I'll be cheating as hell when I do play it someday. So yeah, because <laughs> I know it's old like that. Mm. I just put everything in time two speed too, or times four speed. <laughs> right. But yeah, no, I would definitely. It, yeah, I wouldn't play it legit the normal way. Oh, and I also wanted to say since I have you on here, um, I also am a fan of Snatcher too. I played Snatcher for the show. Early, a long time ago, and that that you that is a really good game. That's a fantastic game, and you know, actually, <laughs> oh my god, I'm going to tell the story because I want to make you have to edit something even longer. But uh, <laughs> over on uh, my Twitch channel, we actually played. We're playing through um, a game came that came out. It was an RPG that came out based on Snatcher called SD Snatcher for the MSX. So it's literally a turn based RPG that basically retells and reimagines the story of Snatcher. We played through Snatcher on the MSX last year as well we got to the very end of the game and i lost the save file (laughs) so that was about 40 hours of my life down the drain and i keep telling myself i'm going to find a rom hack or something and and hack my way back to that spot but i haven't sorted it out yet okay i'm gonna have to look this up i I never messed you said turbo graphics or no msx no msx yeah the msx okay i don't mess with those very much but i might have to look this up because i wouldn't I really did enjoy Snatcher. So we're gonna we're actually talking about doing police knots in the future here in the show. Ooh, yep. that'd be cool. Yeah, I've never played it, and it's something that I I feel like I should play. 
I highly recommend Nether of I. I have that, and I've got the English uh, ROM, but I just haven't played through it yet. Um, but I highly recommend if you are a Snatcher fan, check out the MSX version of Snatcher. So it's the original, especially if you're really familiar with the one that came here on Sega CD, because uh, there's a lot of differences. It's pretty neat to see how it changed. I just played the Sega CD version, but I did see some. I have looked up since listening to Player One about some of the differences, and <laughs> yeah. I saw there's a few. Yeah, oh, there's a few. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Since I had you on here, I had to mention Snatcher because I've listened to you. <laughs> oh, I love that, love that game so much. It's a good game. I, I, we've, we've talked about doing it again because we're going to redo some of the old episodes because the cast had changed midway through this show or uh, <sighs> changed some, some episodes I want to redo just because I want to revisit certain games. Well, hey, let me know. If yeah, I that, will. Because I would love to be on an episode about that. All right. And that about wraps this up. So I want to thank Greg for taking time out and joining us today. And if this episode was a little wonky, we did have, there's edit, we had recording <laughs> issues. <laughs> you might not notice this because I'm going to edit them, but yeah. Inter- if yeah, if it seems like we jump from topic to topic towards the beginning, that's because it's being patched together. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> that happens. We've had worse. Hey, at least I didn't sound like I was coming out my webcam and screaming the entire time for a whole three hour episode. <laughs> Yeah, well. So hey, that, that was good. All right, I want to thank everyone for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, we have tons of other episodes. We go through movies, comics, mostly games, and we dang have nothing else that close to what this is. But definitely go check <laughs> out all our other episodes that we have done. And if, if you and please give a sh- go and give a shout out to our awesome intro and outro, courtesy of Bobby, aka Mike Tony from ZP Bite the Bullet. Song to cool kids. Squ- Cool Kid Squad. Wow, well, I butchered that a little bit. Um, there'll be a link in the in the show notes for his YouTube channel. Definitely go check him out. And please follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and we are also on YouTube. We need more subscribers. I need that custom URL, so please subscribe to us on there. You just get the same. I mean, there's no video content in the show, but the audio's there if you, if you want YouTube for it. Because you know, people do, and I'm slowed uploading it, though, so <laughs> please subscribe more, and I'll be more interested. All right, I want to thank everyone for listening. We will see you guys all next week. Uh, bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. bye. bye.